shot on this setup, the new DJI RS2 with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. In today's video, I'm going to give my initial thoughts on this beast of a gimbal. First off, I just want to say what this video is. This video is my personal review of this gimbal after only a week's worth of field tests. I'll also compare my experience using the Juin Crane 2 and the DJI RS2. Now, my Juin Crane 2 has found a new home, so I can't have any footage of it for this video, but to take its place is its little brother, the Zhuin Crane version 2, and I'll be using this to compare any features between the two gimbals. Secondly, I want to save everyone's time and tell you what this video is not. This video is not a tutorial on how to use this gimbal. I'm not going to list and explain all the features. Instead, any features that I do list off are going to be the ones that I like in particular, and I'll explain why I like them. So let's get into it. This gimbal is super light. The gimbal itself is advertised to weigh only 2.3 pounds. Add a few more ounces for the mini tripod and handle, and it's still pretty light. Now, when you add the Pocket 4K, the cage, the SSD, and the battery bank, surprisingly, it's still pretty light. So much so that I could operate it with one hand and still get really smooth footage. Now, there is one big difference between this gimbal and the Zhuin Crane 2 that allows this to be as light as it is. And that is this back end arm. The difference being on the Zhuin, the arm comes up all the way to camera level, but on the RS2, the arm comes up short, and I have all this clearance to view the camera's LCD screen unobstructed. So with the Crane 2, I had to use an external monitor which added weight, but with the RS2, I no longer have to do that. So the RS2 has these little switches on each axis that when you lock them, it prevents the gimbal from moving. This makes balancing the gimbal a lot easier because you could balance one axis without the other two swinging all over the place. The locking mechanisms also make commuting with the gimbal a lot less annoying because when you stick this in the side pocket of the camera bag, the arms are not flinging all over the place. So I don't use the joystick all too much, but what I like about this joystick over the Crane 2s is this joystick controls all axes independent of whatever mode you're in. So if you're in pan follow, pan tilt follow, FPV, it doesn't matter. If you move the joystick, the camera will move in whatever direction you choose. Unlike the Crane 2, where whatever mode you're in dictated which axes were locked and which ones you could move with a joystick. The only mode where full joystick control isn't allowable is actually two modes, portrait and 3D roll. So basically, if your camera is like this, or like in flashlight mode, the joystick you won't have full control over all axes. So the RS2 is advertised to have a 10 pound payload, which is a very heavy setup. My initial reasoning for getting this gimbal was I needed something that could balance the Pocket 4K with no problem. But not only the Pocket 4K, but all the accessories that I use to make the Pocket 4K work. The Zhuin Crane 2 never had perfect balance with the Blackmagic. I even tried counterweights and there would always be at least one axis that couldn't make it. But the RS2 has absolutely zero issues balancing the Pocket 4K with a cage, with a battery bank, with the SSD, cables, and probably anything else that I want to throw at it. I didn't need any counterweights, nothing. The fact that the payload is so high makes this gimbal future-proof for any rig that I want to put together later on. The touchscreen is a very nice addition. Not too much to say here other than it's just easier to access the menu. So there's this trigger on the front of the handle that I'm sure has many functions, but my main use for it is to recenter the camera to the default position. So let's say I used a joystick or I was in a different mode and I want the camera to recenter. All I do is double click the trigger, boom. When I was using the Zhuin Crane 2, the only way I knew to recenter the camera was to hold mode, turn off the motors, right? And then hold mode again to turn the back on and then it recenters. Now we're only talking about a difference of only a few seconds between the two gimbals, but in a run and gun situation and you need to get the shot centered, double clicking is going to be that much faster than holding down the mode button and shutting down the motors, starting it back up again. You see what I'm saying? This is by far the smoothest gimbal I've ever used. This is evident in the shots from earlier, but what's really impressive is how well it stabilized the camera when I was walking down steps. Usually when I climb up or down stairs, you would see a very tiny bump in the footage for every step that I took. But this shot right here shows me going down some stairs and it is butter. 
All right, guys, that is all I got for you today. As always, check out the description below to see my complete gear list if you're interested in what I'm using. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.